Hello, creative friends. My name is Susie, and I am the owner of The Speckled Loon. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here, welcome for the first time. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I am so glad you're here. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already to my channel, consider subscribing so you will see more of this fun content. Today, we are celebrating everything that is green and yellow and the North Dakota State University Bison with a special DIY decor kit brought to you in conjunction with the NDSU Bookstore where you can purchase this kit. They will have them in stock in their store and if they are available on their website, they can let you know. I have got their website linked down below and there's a messaging feature on there so you can send them a message if you're interested in having a kit shipped to you. But this kit is fun. I'm going to walk you through all five projects and we are going to get going step by step. All your paint is included, your glue is included. So the only thing you need to bring is a little bit of creativity and maybe a pair of scissors and a paper plate to mix your paint. Other than that, we are ready to dive in and start creating five fun NDSU Bison DIY decor projects. Let's head on out over to the craft room and get started. Let's go over everything you are going to receive in your DIY decor kit. It's going to come in this box. You'll have some printed instructions and all the supplies and the projects are wrapped individually. So you'll be able to easily keep track of each part. And as we do each project in the video, we'll go over all the exact parts for that project. But you are going to receive everything in the kit to complete these projects here. First of all, there is the tag banner. There is the layered bison sign. There is the gnome with five interchangeable sayings. There is the truck with five interchangeable sports balls. And that truck, gnome, and layered bison sign all come with their own little stand as well and the sayings and the balls between the gnome and the truck are interchangeable. You'll get everything to make this double-sided tag garland as well. The supplies that you are going to get are a bottle of green, yellow, and white paint. This is more than enough to finish all the projects and even when you need to do more than one coat. And there's three paint brushes these foam paint brushes, there's one for each color, as well as these foam makeup wedges that we'll use. And for the very small items we'll be painting with these little Q-tips, you're going to get a small tube of glue. If you're working with your kids on this, you're gonna wanna make sure you supervise them because this is a super glue. And for doing the small items on the super glue, you just put a bit of glue on a toothpick and apply it in very small amounts. You are going to need a good pair of scissors to cut the ribbon, maybe some painter's tape. We provide you with a little bit too, and either a wet paper towel or a baby wipe for cleanup and a paper plate for working with your projects. Our first project is the layered bison sign. You are going to receive everything to complete this sign, and there's a small stand included for easy display. We are going to be painting this base white. It will have a outline of the bison so you can see where to place it. There is this overlay with detail that we will be painting green. And there is the small horn and swoosh that goes in the back that will be white. This little snout is green and then there is the base of the bison that will be yellow. The first thing that we are going to paint is all our white parts. So we're going to take your white paint and you're going to put a little bit on that paper plate. We'll use a foam brush for the base, the rectangular base. Q-tip for the small white horn and swoosh. We're going to use yellow and a sponge for the bison base and green on the overlay and the snout puff. And the first thing we're going to do is just take a little bit of that white paint. Your paint's going to come in sealed bottles. You're just going to need to remove that seal. And then I just do, with a foam brush, a very light coat. 
you're going to have that small little TM in there, the trademark. If you get white paint in that, just take a Q-tip, that one of the ones that were provided, or excuse me, a toothpick, and go ahead and dig that out. Once you are painting, and if you notice you get any paint on the sides, just take a baby wipe or a wet paper towel, or if you have those makeup wipes, um, and go around the sides and get that off of there because when you will put it on, you don't want the white on the dark part of the outside of the piece. And also, just to keep your paintbrushes fresh, you can wrap them in a wet paper towel or a baby wipe when not in use, and that way they will not dry out while you're working on other colors, or you can use cling wrap, saran wrap, or glad press and seal. Now I'm just taking that Q-tip and using kind of the flat end of it, I dip it in a little bit of paint, and that is how I am painting the swoosh and the horn. They are on a piece of painter's tape that I've taped down and I put it sticky side up to small to hold the smaller items. So to do my bison, the green overlay, I'm taking my green paint, putting a little bit on the paper plate, and I'm taking a Q-tip again. I'm using the flat end of it, not the pointy end. And I'm doing the small little puff that comes out of his snout. And then I am going to go ahead and do the bison overlay like that as well. And you can just kind of spread the paint around with that Q-tip. It's a great way to paint without getting a lot of brush strokes and paint all over the insides and the sides. And it keeps it basically on the surface of the piece that you're painting. You could, on this larger surface, use one of those makeup wedges that'd be fine, but for these small lines, I like to use the Q-tips, and I do two coats on the base of the bison, and, or excuse me, on the green bison, and the white base as well. Just so you know, usually one coat does not cover, you need to do two coats, and it just gives it a smoother appearance. So for the bison base that we are painting yellow, I'm gonna show you how it works when you use one of the foam makeup wedges. And these are great because if they get dried out, you can just cut the bottom off of it, just a very little bit, and then you'll have a fresh wedge to work with. And when going over those engraved areas on the hindquarters and then the eye, if you get any in, again, just go very lightly over it, but use a Q-tip to just go ahead and scoop that out, or a toothpick works as well. And here I'm just doing my second coat to show you that, <clears throat> excuse me, after that it works out to be nice and smooth. I did do two coats on every piece. You can now put everything together. I'm just doing a dry fit. That outline wasn't very visible on camera, but you will be able to see it. And then the green part, you're just going to eyeball and center it right over the yellow. There'll be a small yellow edge all the way around. And then that swoosh on his back and his horn fit right into the slot there and then the snout just goes on top of the yellow part that's outlined. So now I'm just taking my super glue and I'm doing just very small tiny dots on the yellow base. And if I need very, very small dots like on that poof coming out of the snout or the tail, I just go ahead and put a little bit of super glue on a toothpick. And now what I'm doing is just holding this very close to make sure I can see that that's lined up correctly. I have bad vision, so I have to bring it close to see, but it's lined up in that area. And there is a little cutout for the white of the eye, so you don't have to worry about a small part there. And I'm just pressing it down. It sets up rather quickly. Now I'm just doing a bit of blue on the green overlay. And for the small part, like on the tail and the hoofs and the thinner areas I'm just using that toothpick with a little bit of super glue and getting that all applied and then like I said you'll just eyeball and kind of center this right over that yellow layer and once you have it on you just have to press it for a few seconds but if you have some clothespins that you can use those for clamps as well but really a little bit of pressure firmly applied is all that you need. 
So the next little part we're going to put on is that little green part of the puff. It's going to go over the yellow part and that is very tiny so I do use a little bit of glue in just small areas on that as well. You just need a very small amount. And then I'm going to take the glue and put a small amount in the space for the swoosh on the back and the horn and press those into place. And then once you have that, your project is complete and you can put together the little small two-piece stand that I have in the upper left there to display your sign on a shelf or a tiered tray. And your first project is complete. Our next project is the bison gnome and this is an interchangeable gnome. What that means is he can hold um, those little signs that you see and you can switch them out as you like. There's also some sports balls, football, basketball, etc. that are on the truck we'll do next and he can hold those too. And he does come with a little stand. So he has this base with a shiplap lines in it and he's got a beard He's got two hands, two feet, and then the little spacers in the nose, we won't even have to paint. We're just gonna leave those unpainted. And if you see, those spacers are to have that little gap there so he can hold those signs. And there's a spot for those marked on the beard. The first thing we're gonna do is paint that shiplap round backer. And you take a little gold paint, put it on your plate, and get out one of your foam brushes and we are going to get to work. I've sped this way up, so you don't have to watch me paint all day, but we're gonna paint that backer. What you see me doing there is, while the paint is still wet, if I get any globs or excess paint in those shiplap lines, I just take a toothpick, you've got a few in your kit, and I drag it right through those lines. They're indented a little bit, scored, if you will, to make them nice and straight. And by dragging that toothpick through, it takes out that excess paint and leaves a nice crisp line for you. I do do two coats of this yellow on the backer. In fact, I probably do two coats on everything in this kit. The next thing we're gonna do is just paint your white beard. I'm gonna take my white paint provided in the kit. And again, a paper plate is really good to use for a little easel. It makes it uh, quick and easy for putting your paint on and then if it gets dried out, you can just toss it away. But I'm just using my white foam brush there and then if I get any excess paint on the sides, I just take my wet paper towel or baby wipe and get that off. The next thing we're gonna do is paint our green items. So that would be the hat, the shoes, and the little uh, ovals that we use for the hands or mittens. I'm just using my foam sponge for the hat. And then I'm just using my little Q-tip for the feet and the hands. And I, again, I do two coats on everything. So once everything is dry, I like to do a test fit on the oval to see where I want everything to be and the little feet slide in right where you see them. There's a little outline on that beard for the spacers and the hands. And once I have everything where I want it, I'm gonna take a piece of that painter's tape. I'm gonna just drape it right across the top of the hat to affix that so it stays put. And the first thing I'm gonna do is glue on the beard. Since everything goes together like a little puzzle, if the hat is steady, then everything is going to go on just fine. So I'm going to hold down that beard for a few seconds, and this is sped up, but I do hold down that beard for a few seconds to make sure it's secure. Then I do the hat, and then I put a small drop of glue in where the nose would go, and put that in. Again, I just leave the nose unpainted. If you have flesh-colored paint, you can do it whatever color you want. The next part is the shoes. I do the right shoe first. It's got a little hook where it goes right into that part of the beard there that I'm showing you. 
And when you first get your kit, it's kind of taped together and you will see how that fits together. And then the left shoe, you can tell that that is the heel right there. There's a little indent on that left part of it. And that's going to be on the outside and you're going to take the inside and just rest it right up there in the beard. So he's on there good and secure now. The next thing are those two little, you'll see half circles etched into the beard, very faint after you paint it, but they will be there. That is where you are going to put on your little spacers. You can actually either do a drop of glue in that indentation or, or you can do it on the spacer. It's just a little half circle. Finally, you're going to put a little bit of glue on each spacer and you are going to line up the edge of the hand, the outside edge of the hand with the spacer leaving that area open where you can slip in your little sayings or the balls from the truck that we're doing next. You'll see there the basketball, there's the baseball, there's also a volleyball and a soccer ball. Then the two-piece stands that you get with your kit are just um, a slotted design and he is done and you can switch out those balls and the sayings however you want throughout the year for whatever sport you're following, etc. And your sign is complete. Our next project is the tailgating truck, which is also an interchangeable piece. It comes with this cute little truck that holds the sports balls interchangeably and then also the little sings from the gnome that we just painted. And all these balls that are in the truck pack are pre-painted so you don't have to worry about painting those. We will be doing the truck green, the little tires are pre-painted black, we will be doing the bed rail in the frame in yellow and the backer in white. The first thing we're going to paint, and this is just pretty repetitive, so I sped it up here, is your white backer. I do two coats on it with the foam brush, and I take my baby wipe and wipe off any excess globs of paint on the sides so it will look nice when it's all done. You'll see I got that one there, and I just wipe them right off. And if you forget to do it while it's wet and it's you want to get rid of it when it's dry, you can do a piece of sandpaper or just a black Sharpie around the edge and that will um, crisp it up too. I'm taking the foam makeup wedge and painting the truck green and that does a good job on that. And again, I do two coats for the small little bed rail. You can use the Q-tip or the makeup wedge, works fine. And I do use the Q-tip around the frame because it is so thin. And again, I do two coats as well with the yellow. With yellow, you almost always have to do two coats. It's just one of those colors where you don't get the best of coverage. So just to make it look nice, I use um, two coats. And again, I go around this with my baby wipe as well. You can see I have a little glob there on the inside of the frame. I want to keep that clean. So the baby wipe take care, takes care of that problem for me. Once my two coats on everything have dried up, the first thing I am going to do is get a few drops of glue on that thin frame and get that together because we line up everything off that frame. And if your glue is going on too globby, again, just put a little bit on the end of a toothpick and put it in in very fine dots and that will work best. To line this up, they are the backer and frame the same size. So I put the frame in one hand the backer and another and have them on a good flat surface and then press them together. Again, you can use uh, clothespins for clamps if you want. If you get any glue oozing out the sides, go ahead and just give it a quick wipe with your baby wipe and it will work just fine. Once that has set up and dried, we want to do a fitting of where we want our truck before we glue it down. So I like to rest the little wheels right on top of that bottom part of the frame and that gives you for a nice straight placement on your truck and then the truck goes right on top of those wheels. I tape down the truck with a bit of painters tape to anchor it and then I go about gluing those wheels on. 
So again, you're just going to take your glue that's provided in your kit and do small drops, just two or three small drops on the wheels. Press to set. And then once those wheels have set, you can remove the tape from the truck and start putting glue on the back of the truck and then replacing the truck back down and pressing it to set it right on top of those wheels. Once your truck has set, there is a little bump out right behind the window where your bed rail is going to go on the right side of your bed rail. And then you just want to put a drop on each of those rungs that will be the right side. And then a couple of drops on the very bottom bed rail, not on the top. The bed rail is going to rest right on top of that bed. So there will be a space between the bed rail and the back of the sign. And that is the space where all the balls and the little sayings from the gnome can be placed. You'll see, I'm trying to show you there where that space is. It's hard to film it, but you get the idea. So then they can pop in and out. And you want to wait till your glue has dried before you do that. This also comes with a stand and you can display it on the stand or lean it up. And then each one of those balls pop in and out as well as the sayings from the gnome. Thanks for sticking with us so far. We are getting to the tail end of our projects. Our next one is this adorable bison tag banner. It consists of five base tags, six beads, and the letters B, I, S, O, and N. And each tag on the banner has got a outline for the letter that will go on it. So you're gonna wanna line up your letters with the corresponding tag. And that will give you exact placement of where you need to put things. So I paint each tag with two coats of yellow and I used my makeup sponge for that. And then for each letter, I do two coats of green. Again, you can use your Q-tip or your makeup sponge. For some reason, the makeup sponge worked better for this and I was able to get them done quite quickly. Once they are all dry, then it's time to start adhering them. And this is where you're going to want to line everything up. That little outline will be just barely visible and you want it just very faint so you know exactly where to put your letter. So you're going to take your super glue included in this project, do a couple drops on the back of each letter and get that uh, corresponding tag for that letter and get it lined up. So go ahead and you can see right there, I'm getting it right by the outline for the end. Once I have where I want it, I have a couple seconds to reposition it, but it looks good. So I'm going to press to it here. Then I'm going to just repeat on each letter until I have them all adhered to their corresponding tag. Once I have each one glued on and the glue has set, I'm going to start by making my string be doubled up so it's got two strands and I'm taking a toothpick that's provided in the kit and a small piece of painter's tape and I'm winding them around together making my own needle. Then I'm going to go on the first bead which will be to the right of the end and I am going to leave a little bit of string with that natural loop at the end maybe two or three inches. And then I'm going to go through the bead one more time to just anchor that string in there so there won't be any slippage. It's called your anchor bead and you're going to do the same thing at the other end. Once you start stringing your pendants, you're going to go down through the first hole and up through the second hole so the string will be behind the pendant. Then you'll string on a bead between each letter and you're going to repeat that until you get all the way over to the very left hand letter which is the B for bison. Once you have that strung up, you're going to put on your final bead and get that snug up against the B tag. And you're going to go through it a second time again to make that anchor bead and get everything secure. Once you have your anchor bead done, then you're going to take your scissors and cut off the excess. And we are going to make a double knot at the very base of that bead. So I'm going to make one 
and then two loops and then pull them very tight. So I've got that knot and then that bead is secure. And then finally to make my second loop, I'm just going to tie a knot at the very end of that string, making a loop on the left hand side of your tag banner. And then it's ready to display. You can tape the tags to your tear tray or if you have hooks, you can hook the loop at each end. Hey, guess what? It is our final project. It is our reversible garland. This is gonna come with a reversible tag and the string is already attached to the tassel for you. It has a yellow ribbon and the tag says NDSU on one side and North Dakota on the other and it has all these beautiful beads that are natural and pre-painted. So the only painting on this project is this little NDSU part in the North Dakota. So the NDSU I did in yellow and the letters NDSU I did in green. The base that I did in yellow has got a small etched out part so you can see where to easily place each letter. I did two coats on all of these. I did yellow on the little heart that goes on the North Dakota and I did green on the state itself. Once these are all painted with your two coats, it's time to glue everything together. The NDSU green letters go onto the yellow base and there is that small little outline that you are going to see so you can adhere them very easily and get them lined up. I'm just double checking my alignment. I have very poor bit vision, so I like to get it up close to make sure that I get it adhered and aligned properly. Finally, we're going to go ahead and glue that NDSU right on the middle of that tag. Once that is adhered well, I flip the tag over. I put a little glue on the back of the North Dakota. And then I do a small bit of glue where the heart needs to go and put that heart in and press to it here. And this tag portion of the project is complete. This next part, if you need to pause, this is the order that our beads are going to go in. And once you have them all laid out like this, we'll start stringing everything together. So the order of your beads is we've got three anchor beads, a yellow, a white, and then this green and black pattern one. It doesn't show up great on camera, but it's kind of got a green and excuse me, green and black plaid design to it. Then you go a natural, a yellow, a natural, a green, a natural, and a white. And you repeat that course five times. Then again, you have anchor of a yellow, a white, and the green plaid. And that is the order that I have decided to string mine in. You can do yours however you want. I'm a little OCD and I like mine in a specific pattern. If you don't, you can do them random. So you're going to take your string and we are going to make a needle just like we did for our tag banner. You're going to take the two ends of the string, it is doubled up again, and a toothpick and a small bit of painter's tape and you're going to twist it around super tight until you have a needle that can poke through all your beads. Then you're going to start with your course of three anchor beads, the yellow, the white, and the green, and put those on. And then you are going to do your five regular courses. So a natural, a yellow, another natural, a green, natural again, and a white. And you are going to repeat that for the five courses. I have sped this up because it's quite repetitive. You're doing the same thing, but I wanted you to see the entire process. Once you have that final course on, we will do our three other anchor beads, the yellow, the white, and the green and black plaid one. And then it's time to run the string through our tag. So you can do this any way you really want. Here's how I do it. I bring it up through the back. Then I go around the back of the string. And I start going up through the beads. I go through the bottom two beads there and I leave a little bit of string between the bottom bead and the tag because we need a spot to tie our ribbon. But I'm going to go through that plaid one and up through the white bead. And then once I get up through the white bead all the way, 
I am going to cut so I just maybe have five or six inches of string left so I don't have a ton of excess string and it just makes it easier to work with. So I'm up through that one and here I am cutting that off. Now what I'm going to do is do one tie and pull it super tight. Then I'm going to flip it over and go around the string. So the two strings are going around the middle string and I'm going to do a double knot there. That means we have tied a secure knot around our string and that's going to stay in place. I'm cutting off the excess and then I'm just burying that knot in that white bead and it looks like a continuous garland. You don't even know that it's been cut off there. I'm taking my small piece of ribbon, kind of twisting it in the middle to make it easier to go around the string and just doing a small square knot. Kind of looks like a bow tie at this point and to complete it, I take my scissors, I fold the ribbon in half and kind of cut upward toward the end and I make a bird's beak cut. You can just do a slant cut, but if you've got any frayed edges, you're going to want to trim your ribbon. And then this is complete. You've got the NDSU on one side and the North Dakota on the other side and your beautiful string of beads and tassel. Thanks for joining me on the Speckled Loon channel today. All your projects in your NDSU DIY decor kit are complete. Let's take a look at them all together. I want to thank you for purchasing one of these kits. Again, they are available exclusively at the moment at the NDSU Bookstore in Barber, North Dakota. I have left that link below. If you're interested in following the Speckled Loon, my business, on any of my social media channels, everything is linked down below as well. I want to thank you for joining me today. And if you have any questions about the kit, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, I'm going to let the music play and at the end of this video, you will see how I arranged everything on a small shelf. I hope you enjoy your finished projects and don't forget to look for the loon.